Well, if you heard the noises that I did before we came back from break, you would be pretty scared for our Kim DiGiulio. Dinosaurs may have existed a long, long time ago, but it sounds like they are alive right now and pretty close to her. We're going to check in with her right now at the Imagination Station in downtown Toledo because she is at the Dinosaurs Unearthed exhibit. It's new, right, Kim? Good morning, Angie. That's right, I'm at downtown Toledo at the Imagination Station, and I'm joined here with Carl Nelson, the chief scientist here, and he's gonna be telling me a little bit, teaching me about these dinosaurs. Now, the particular exhibit that we're at right now in the entire exhibit is has some Triceratops dinosaurs. And now tell me a little bit about this exhibit. Correct. So Dinosaurs Unearthed has over 20 different dinosaurs. Some are animatronics, like the Triceratops you see behind you. Um, others are ones that you can control yourself. You actually push Ooh. buttons and move the limbs, make them roar, make them come to life. Awesome. Um, and that's what the whole exhibit is about, is about bringing dinosaurs to life. And, you know, in particular, you're talking about the Triceratops. In this example, we've got a juvenile compared to an adult. And the juveniles weren't just like miniature versions of the adults. They're actually a little bit different. In the Triceratops, the horns that everybody's familiar with point back backwards on the juvenile and on the adult they point definitely forward yeah um, so a lot a lot of subtle differences that paleontologists can point out when you're comparing the juveniles with the adults and that's one thing you can see here at the exhibit at imagination station yeah I definitely noticed that the juvenile one looks a lot cuter because I think that was more of the uh, they're, they're more appealing definitely exactly that's one of the things that people point out is that the eyes on the juvenile are actually a little bit bigger and more pronounced than on the adult where they're a little bit more sunken in and you know we like to tell stories about dinosaurs and one of the stories is that well that makes the juvenile cuter so that the uh, adults will not uh, pred predate on them. Yeah, exactly. And um, those, for those of you who think that you know it all about dinosaurs, that you don't need to come here, that's not true because you actually told me that you guys have had some new findings recently. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, talking about juvenile dinosaurs, we have a model or an animatronic of a juvenile T-Rex. And one of the current findings recently was um, not quite feathers on a baby T-Rex, but sort of that downy sort of stuff that you find on baby chicks. And the thinking is that that would help the tiny dinosaur maintain its heat so it wouldn't have to be hunting continuously. Now, as you grow into an adult dinosaur, you actually need to expel a lot of that heat because your volume to surface area increases, and so they would shed the uh, feathers or the proto-feathers. Awesome. All right, well, thank you so much. And Angie, I know you said that your nephew was really into dinosaurs, so you've got to bring him down here. This is awesome. So it's here till uh, April 12th, so you've got you to check it out. And you know what? You, you mentioned it a little bit earlier. You learn new things about dinosaurs every day, and it amazes me that millions of years after they've been gone off of this earth, or not alive anymore anyway, that we are still learning new things. Like I learned from my nephew that they're actually more closely related to birds than we originally thought. So that's pretty cool. All right, thanks so much.